Hi, so today I wanted to go over uh, how to calculate speeds for RAM. I know a lot of people have confusion uh, when it comes to how they can quickly calculate the RAM they need based on the speed of their front side bus, or they're interested in knowing how many lines of code are uh, capable of being transmitted per second uh, based on uh, a stick of RAM that they've purchased. So whether or not you're going for an up and coming job interview or certification um, or a test, you may be asked how to compute uh, RAM speeds and front side bus speeds quickly given one or the other. So let's quickly jump into it. So we have DDR RAM and this stands for double data rate random access memory. So the idea is, is that for double data rate, for every line of code you've got uh, going into the CPU, this is a memory controller chip right here, uh, for every line of code you've got going into the CPU, you've got uh, two lines of code being pulled off by the memory controller chip. So if this is 0, 0, uh, Zero, 001 and this is zero, zero, one, zero, and this is zero, zero, one, one. Let's abbreviate the rest of these. You would have two lines of code being pulled off and put onto the external data bus for processing. Again, every, uh, every time a line of code is being brought in and processed by the CPU, you've got two lines of code being pulled by the memory controller chip and put on to the external data bus. We'll call this the uh, external data bus for processing. That's a quick and easy way to understand uh, uh, the double, da double data rate portion of, uh, of DDR RAM. And of course, a random access memory just means this memory controller chip is capable of pulling any one of these lines of code just as easily as the other. So it sees all of them uh, just as easily as it does any other individual one. So let's get in quickly because I know you're wanting to know how to compute uh, these RAM speeds. We'll go through and we'll look at uh, DDR, look at uh, DDR2, DDR3, We'll look at uh, DDR4. So you need to memorize these numbers. 28, and we'll see what these come in place. 228, uh, 428, and 818. These are just numbers you're going to have to commit to memory, but it's important. You can easily commit these to memory um, because if you do, then you know how to go back, back and forth between input output speeds, uh, DDR ratings. Um, you can go for mega transfers per second into uh, core speeds, or you can go from core speeds into PC um, uh, DIM ratings very, very quickly. So let's take a look at this. All right, let's say, for example, we wanted to calculate, uh, we had uh, DDR here, and we had we were asked, we had the uh, core speed here, and we had the uh, DDR rating here. and we had the PC uh, number here. And let's say we were given a PC number of PC, and we'll call this PC um, 6400. Okay. Well, if we've memorized these numbers, 2 and 8, right, then we know that for a PC rating of 6400, we're going to have to have a DDR rating. I should back that up. Uh, we're going to have a DDR rating of DDR800. Again, for those of you who are uh, pretty new to studying this, PC rating, this is 6400, is given in mega, megabytes per second. So this is megabytes per second. And that, if we go back up here, that's the uh, rate at which data is taken, or the rate, I should say, 
at which lines of code are, are excited, excited is the correct word to use, um, and jump to the memory controller chip. It's a rate at which they are handed over to the memory controller chip for processing. That is the definition of what the uh, number is on a PC number. Uh, the rate at which uh, these lines of code are picked up by the memory controller chip handed over. Uh, so that's what the 6400 means. You have 6400 bytes or megabytes per second that are being handed over uh, from this stick of RAM over to the memory controller chip. So um, we were able to actually compute the DDR rating or the speed off that as well. So if we take a, a look at a DDR stick, a DIM, it might have one, two, three, four DRAM chips on it. Each one of these DRAM chips might hold uh, two gigabytes each and the DDR rating number corresponds to the speed at which each of these uh, DRAM chips is running at relative to the core speed. And The core speed is just the rate at which lines of code are being fired into the CPU for processing. So for a DDR rating of 800 based on our formula we had of 2, the core would be running at 400 and this is megahertz. We could do the same calculation for DDR RAM if we were told we had a core speed of 200. In that case, we would have a DDR rating of uh, DDR 400. Again, that 400 would correspond to the individual speed that each of these DRAM chips is running at. And our throughput. Uh, our PC number, how many megabytes per second are being handed over to the memory controller chip would be PC 3200. So it's important you just memorize these numbers and you can see if you memorize the, two, uh, the 228, the 428, the 28, and the 818 you can easily move back and forth between these numbers. Now let's look at a calculation for uh, DDR2. Okay, so for DDR2, we're actually going off the input-output speed as opposed to just the core speed. That's hence we have an additional number here. So for DDR2, we're going off the input-output speed instead of the core speed. And I should say going after, I mean hunting and buying a stick of RAM, right? Because ultimately we're looking at these ratings for DDR to be able to determine which RAM we should purchase relative to the speed of our processor, okay? So let's take a look at this. For DDR2, we have a uh, still have a core speed we're probably going to be given. We have a uh, input-output speed. We have a DDR uh, rating again, and we're still going to have a PC uh, number, although this is going to be PC2 and then the number, right? So the idea is, is that when we increase the input-output speed, we're doing that. A lot of times DDR2 sticks have extra buffering on them that allow us to be able to increase the input-output speed or the rate at which uh, bytes of code are, are, are firing. Uh, and um, that's one of the things that separates DDR2 from DDR. And the same input-output speed, is, you'll find that inherent in DDR3 and DDR4 as well. Okay, so let's look at this again. Let's say we had a core speed for DDR2 of, um, we'll call it, make it simple, we'll have a core speed of uh, 300. Okay, then our input output speed based on our variables up here will be 2, so we'll have an input output speed of 600, and we'll have a DDR rating of DDR2. Uh, Two, and then we'll have our number, uh, which is going to be uh, two again, right? Because we doubled it, so that's going to be DDR 1200. And for our PC, excuse me, our PC two number, we're going to have 
PC2 9600. So let's take a look at this for a second. What if we wanted to buy a stick of RAM in DDR2 1200? We knew DDR2 1200, but we didn't know whether or not we could actually uh, be able to use all that RAM speed based on the core we uh, we currently had in the, our clock speed. Well, we could easily calculate it, right? Again, going backwards, if we had DDR2 1200, we could easily take this number and calculate the input output speed, which would be 600 megahertz. All we would do is divide the DDR2 1200, this 1200, by 2 to get 600. And then we could actually come back and calculate the core speed by dividing 2 into 600 and get uh, 300 megahertz. So at a front side bus that's running at 300 megahertz, it's capable of handling uh, a DDR2 uh, rating of DDR2-1200. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say we had a core speed of 400. Then we would have input output speed of 800. And our DRAM chips would be firing at uh, DDR2-1600. Uh, uh, and we would be looking for PC2-12800. Uh, OK, given the speed of DDR4, uh, the calculation is going to be the same, but it's going to be slightly different in terms of what you're probably being asked for. So DDR4 goes off of mega transfers per second. And so you may be asked a question if you're given a mega transfer per second. Mega transfers are under uh, our types of bandwidth. You may be asked um, uh, what a certain core speed is based on a bandwidth. Then you may be asked one step further what type of DRAM chip you would use and what the PC4 number might be, the speed or the throughput at which you're firing. So let's take a look at this. If we were given a bandwidth of, say it was a high bandwidth, of 3200. We'd say this would be mega transfers per second. Let's take a look at this. We will go back up here and determine uh, based on our numbers we would have uh, 8818 right here, right? So now you can quickly be able to determine what the DRAM chip is currently running at, right? This would be you would need DDR4, DDR would be the same, so 3200. And you, of course, would have the throughput, which would be incredibly high, PCR, PC4, 25. And we could also calculate the core speed at a bandwidth of 3200. We would simply take this 3200 divide it by 8 and your core speed would be running at 400 megahertz. So take a look at this real quick. In our previous example we were dealing with DDR and at a 400 megahertz core speed we were only capable of a throughput of 6400 megabytes per second meaning that for every uh, if the uh, front side bus had uh, was clocking lines of code and bringing them into the CPU at uh, 400 million cycles per second we were only capable of pulling off 6400 uh, million bytes per second, right? But now, look, at a 400, at the same clock speed, we're capable of pulling off uh, 25,600 bytes per second. So think about the terms of applications, what kind of performance-based applications you might be able to run uh, based on just simply upgrading from DDR uh, or, or even DDR2 or DDR3 compared to DDR4. Think about the throughput that DDR4 offers uh, at, at even 400 megahertz compared to, to old-fashioned DDR. So the idea is you just need to commit this table to memory right here. And in doing so, um, 
you'll be able to jump back and forth quickly between core speeds, DDR rating, and PC numbers, and it's incredibly useful, right? I mean, you might see a stick of memory listed under a certain PC number, and you might say, hey, well, am I even capable of using that based on how um, fast my core speed is? Or, um, you know, am I gonna, is my motherboard capable of handling um, this amount of uh, throughput based on the age of it, and given the kind of core I'm using, and the speed at which it's firing at? So I hope this is helpful, and again, you just need to commit these to memory and memorize these numbers, and you'll be able to jump back and forth between core speed and DDR rating.